So as we are going back to the personalization data, uh, you want to just go ahead and select OK. In the search up here at the top, you can go ahead and then put in the app that you need to download, which is Touchdown. Oops. Once you select it on Touchdown, there are actually two different apps that you need to download. One is here, which is called Touchdown for Smartphones. You may have an additional option, which may call it right down here, where it says Touchdown HD. Touchdown HD is mainly for the uh, tablet devices. You want to go ahead and select Install. And then this is what it's going to install. It needs to have access to SMS, your phone, your photos, etc. So you can just hit Accept. And then now, as you can see, it's actually downloading. It's installing right now as you be. You can scroll down from the top with your finger and you can see installing Touchdown HD. Now also, went to the home page here. Uh, you have to have to get used to and using Android if you're not familiar with it already. So if we go back to the Play Store, there are actually two additional apps you need to install. Same procedure, select on the search. This time we're going to go ahead and download Mobile Iron. Oops, one letter too much. You want to select on the Mobile at Work option. Here it is, and basically what you want to do is want to select install. Uh, it's going to go ahead and install and needs access to the following, which is normal for any other application. Sometimes there will be some, sometimes there won't be any. So we're going to select accept. As you can see, that one's installing already right now. And then the final app you actually do need to install would be the touchdown again but it's going to be the touchdown exchange key and then this app here is actually twenty dollars nineteen dollars ninety nine cents you would actually need to purchase this on your own then you can actually get it reimbursed later on uh, through your expense report uh, as long as you you should receive an email in your Google account once you purchased it and then once it's purchased it will uh, you can actually print out that email or copy that email and paste it into your expense report so that it shows validation that you have purchased it. So we're not going to purchase the app right now, but normally you would need to. This is just a test uh, device that we're testing. So here at the mobile at work, you want to open the application. The instructions you provided that pretty much will be the same process. It might be different from various device to device. So here you want to enter your ser server, and this information was, has been provided to you um, through the wireless executive mo mobility team, or even through your manager of how you're doing the BYOD. So we're doing this. Once you put in the server, you hit register. And then you want to put in your username and password. These are the username and password that you need to log in that you normally would use for your login credentials to a computer. So enter exactly how it is that you do it on your computer. It, the password, of course, still applies to case sensitive. And then you select next. Once you're done through that process, it's going to go through a, a series of information and processes. So here we're going to do a device configuration. So as you know, it says mobile at work admin has provided an update for your device. Please follow the setup instructions as appear. This may follow through the same documentation that has been provided to you through the BYOD. 
once you activate, but understand that once you're installing this on your personal device, you may, as you may see, some additional changes from what you normally would have on your device. But here are the main points. Right here, it basically says disable cameras, prevent use of all device cameras, disable features in KeyGuard, prevents use of some features in KeyGuard. So you might be able to do a swipe key, you might not, you might just have to type the letters out and so forth. Uh, it would also need to require encryption on the device. So in case it's ever lost, it's going to be hard to decrypt to retrieve any of the information that is company information on the device as well as your device. And then other several series of events here. Also, there's password rules too. So if you wanted to unlock the device, you cannot leave it as never and then it will never go to sleep. You'll actually require a password. So we'll go ahead and activate. It's going to go through the privacy policy information. And this is the privacy policy through your company. Once it's gone through that process, then it's going to ask you for a configuration update, which requires a password to be put on the device. It's not going to be a simple password. It's one, two, three, four. Uh, here we have high security as a password. So this password here, you can actually put alphanumeric if you like. If you want to use a pin, you can do a pin and medium to high security. So it requires a pin. And here we're just going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I put nine numbers, but technically you just need eight. So if I put seven numbers, so you must contain at least eight numbers. So you can do eight and then I just do nine. So I'm going to hit done and then I re-enter for reconfirmation. And I may have not pressed it properly. Excuse me there for a moment. There we go. I accepted it. Now understand this is the encryption. This is the encryption where it encrypts your device. So uh, no one can basically read the device unless yourself. Um, because you have the password on the device. Now, if someone is able to bypass your password, the encryption still protects your data. So we're going to go ahead and configure. Now it's going to say here to encrypt the device and so forth, you need to actually plug it into a charger. Now, if you plug into the charger, there's actually two ways to do it. There's the way that it is provided to you with the items in the box, which is basically might be this color here, Samsung. It might be a black device, it might be white, it might be gray, it does not really matter. And this is not the actual cable that came with the device, but it will be the cam cable that is provided by the bus, which is a USB uh, that goes to a micro USB. Uh, this device connection would be normally to the bottom of your device once you plug it there. Now to charge it, if you charge this USB directly to your Windows computer or your Mac computer, it will not bypass this encryption. So here we are required to enter a password. As you can say here, encrypt data device will still be grayed out. When you plug this into this device here, as it is shown, uh, and plug it into a wall outlet, this encrypt device will actually appear. Uh, so, but we'll come back to that in a moment. You cannot go any further than this point until you encrypt the device. The encrypting device may take anywhere from uh, five minutes to up to an hour, if any. And that is the everything, all data related on the actual device itself. If you have a memory card that you may have placed on the side or inside of the, the device, as this one here does not have a device. Actually, yes, it does. Right here on the side, you can actually put a memory card in there and it'll actually encrypt that data too. So in case you had pictures, photos, documents, or so forth in this memory card, it would actually encrypt it too. So in case someone actually takes it out and tries to use it onto a computer, they would not be able to read or see any of the data. So we're going to go ahead and close that. So let's go back to the encryption. And I'm going to actually start the encryption um, and I will return back to this video when the encryption has been completed. Uh, provide me a moment here. So the encryption would be battery, battery, under security as listed here. And then you want to select here, encrypt device. 
You also have encrypt external SD card, which is that's the card that was on the side. It might be on this side, it might be on this side, or it might be internally to the device. So you want to go ahead and select that encrypt. As you can see, it's still grayed out until we plug it into an outlet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. As you can see, this is the device. Now you have the option where it says encrypt device. It doesn't say plug in charger. So let me unplug it for a quick moment. And you can see it says plug in charger. And then you want to go ahead and put this in again. It disappears. So now you want to encrypt the device. Then it reconfirms. Are you sure you want to encrypt the device? So you're going to enter your password. Whatever your password is, doesn't technically have to be the password I'm using. You can do the fast encryption. If you select this option, only use memory space will be encrypted, but technically you want to encrypt the whole device. So you want to select encrypt device. If you select this encryption, fast encryption, it'll do it quickly, but only do uh, like a portion, a certain percentage of the actual device to be encrypted, but your data will still be able to be accessible by uh, people who have taken your, your tablet or mobile device. So you definitely want to do this one. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. And then while it is encrypting, it was going to show you this logo with the Android. It's going to reboot automatically. So if you did have applications running, it actually goes to a, like a safe mode process. Another mode process as in uh, imaging the device for uh, encryption, for preparedness. Now, in the, in the reason why that you need to have it charged, fully charged, is basically the encryption does require to have a full battery because it will take some time for it to actually encrypt the device. So I'm going to go ahead and I've gone ahead and unplugged it from the wall. Uh, technically, you do not need to do that. Leave it plugged in at all times. As you can see, it's going through kind of quick. It's right now at... 48%, 56, 65, 73. So the performance of doing the encryption can take anywhere from a few minutes to up to an hour, as this is a much more newer device. Uh, it is actually encrypting it much faster. If you have a much older device, uh, it will not, uh, may take a little longer than normal. Also, the encryption has been completed, so it says 100%. It is going to go ahead and reboot once again. Once it has been completed, you will actually notice that the screen comes up. You can actually go ahead and unplug your cord. Uh, enter your PIN and password to use the encrypted device. So we're going to go ahead and select this. Not The large keyboard does not appear. You would actually just go ahead and enter the keys through the keyboard. And I did up to 9. Ooh, it's asking again. So one, two. Okay, so I went ahead and gone ahead and accepted that password. Uh, this is the encryption logo you're going to normally see. Once you get to this screen where it says Samsung, it should actually get you to the desktop um, or to the main screen where the icon's at. There we go. And then this is just basically the secondary protocol which is now it was it's encrypted so you bypass not bypass you pass through the encryption now you're passing the standard so now you have already gone completed so you want to hit okay 
You want to go back to the mobile iron. And since now it's completed that portion, what you want to do is make sure you know what, let's see if we can brighten this up for you. There you go. So you want to go ahead back to the mobile at work. You can see it's loading up. It's connected to the local Wi-Fi that's in your area or within the company work area. Or if you're using cellular connection, that's fine. But if you try to use the Wi-Fi connection if possible, uh, then it will actually work a little bit better. So now we are at prompted to the certificate. Uh, once we've gone through the certificate, this is basically uh, going to go ahead and install some profiles on your, on your mobile or tablet device. So here are certificates will be a provision on your device. These are uh, certificates that are created through your company. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. These are just basically the extra securities to make sure that you can actually receive email, calendar, etc. on your device. Let's hit next again. Hmm. It is not going forward. Well, actually, we do actually receive an error message up here. It's a very long one. So if you do run into an error message or so forth, feel free to contact the local support team uh, and provide them the actual error message. Or if you can, you can actually put down and if you have an iPhone or another mobile device, you can go ahead and go to the camera picture area. And then you want to go ahead and take a picture of your device or even zoom in if you can to the device of the error message and provide that error message to your uh, support so they can look into further to see how we can get you uh, up and coming for the and bypassing the screen as you can see I cannot get past that screen certificate setup you do actually need to go through the process of certificate setup uh, if you cannot go further than past the screen you will not be able to set up your email uh, if you do have any additional questions feel free to reach out to your local support team so let's try this again configure same message up on top, you cannot continue. 